No, no speaker now. It's steer. I was just, yeah. I'll just, no, no I, I'm going to wait. Because uh, as I was listening to other people, I realized that there's some things I just assumed that you might know, but you don't know. So, uh, so this is going to be fun. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Brian Long. Uh, I'm with uh, Triton One. And we are a validator and an RPC provider on Solana. Um, we're also the team that is loading the entire Solana archive history on Filecoin. Um, we call that project Old Faithful. And uh, Old Faithful is a part of uh, what we call Project Yellowstone. Uh, Solana has a technology on, uh, on the RPCs. It's a data streaming tech uh, plugin that we call Geyser. And so we decided to call this umbrella project that we have Yellowstone because that's where all the geysers are. And uh, then each of the sub projects is named after an actual geyser in Yellowstone. And uh, so the big project, of course, to put all the archive on Filecoin, we thought, okay, that needs to be the mother of all geysers is Old Faithful. So that, that's what we call this project. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, the slides are a little bit out of order. No worries. I'm, we'll uh, we'll just keep rolling. The um, uh, so I again am one of the uh, one of the validators on Solana. One of the original validators. Uh, two co-founders of the company. Linus Kendall is an amazing network and systems engineer, and then Marco Bruken, uh, who's amazing with ops and tuning servers and hardware. Uh, everything we do on bare metal. Um, the uh, so. Uh, the three of us then are the co-founders of Triton One. One of the problems that we have, the problem that we need to solve on Solana, is that our entire archive history is stored in Google Bigtable. Um, and the reason for that, uh, it was a decision made out of necessity, you know, in the early days of any startup when you're just doing things as fast as you can. And it's like, okay, let's just put it over there for now, right? <laughs> um, and... Uh, but on Solana, we process so much data that it's impossible to keep it on the validator. Um, right now, uh, I'll have a slide on this later, 225 terabytes of data for the history, and that's a chain that's only a few years old. Um, it's big and it's growing rapidly. So we can't keep it on the validator node. We push all of the, the archive and history off into big table. Um, there's a handful of replicas that are all independent uh, of you know, big table replicas of the archive. Um, we operate one of them. The part that sucks is that if you want to get access to any of the Solana archive history, you have to go through a gatekeeper. Um, we're one of the gatekeepers and I think that sucks, right? So it, it shouldn't be that way. Um, so with that problem in front of us to say, okay, what can we do to kind of fix this uh, archive problem? Our co-founder, Linus Kendall, and another guy named Richard Patel, um, who currently works for Jump Crypto, uh, he's on the Fire Dancer team uh, building the Solana Fire Dancer client. And the two of those guys got together. They're both brilliant. They got together at St. Pancras train uh, station in London uh, a couple of years ago and started brainstorming on how to solve this problem. And um, this is what happens when you ask Dolly to create an image. I was saying two guys having you got a coffee at a cafe at St. Francis Station. It turns the entire train station into, <laughs> into coffee tables. And uh, so anyway, so that's the representation of the two guys at the St. Pancras meeting. And um, uh, after that meeting, um, Lena says, okay, we're going to use cars. That's how we're going to fix it. And I'm like, okay, you're at a train station. What does a rail car have to do with this? And he's like, no, 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 no. So then he explained to me the, the content addressable format that they're going to do. Basically, every epoch is going to be one really big file, and then we'll be able to look inside to just get the bytes that we're interested in. Um, and so with that, it's like, oh, well, we're going to put it. Richard said, hey, let's put it on Filecoin. Um, it's great. They can support it. Um, sounds really good. So what we needed to do then was go talk to... The Solana teams, uh, Solana Foundation, as well as Solana Labs, now known as Onza, um, and then also on the Filecoin side, uh, talk to them about how to coordinate this project and make it work. Um, uh, I, I do need to say that it's not a direct project between Filecoin and Solana. 
it's us in the middle of kind of orchestrating all of this. So um, we assembled our team. So we had to get the guys with the hats to come in. And uh, we brought in, uh, uh, on Twitter, he's known as Immaterial Inc. Uh, he's a brilliant Go programmer. He actually wrote the Go library for Solana. Um, and he loves tinkering with this low-level stuff. Uh, so we brought in him, uh, as well as some other folks on our team, uh, Pedro Gomez and uh, Christian, uh, who I can't pronounce his last name. He's from Poland. <laughs> um, Polish names are always hard for me. And uh, then we brought in some of the folks, uh, the engineers from Solana Labs, as well as support from Protocol Labs as well. Um, I said at the beginning of the, the slide, I said it's a play in three acts. So the first act is introducing the characters and presenting the problem. The second act is where it gets gnarly and nasty and dark. <laughs> and uh, so here we are a year ago in the jaws of a bear market. And, uh, you know, crypto prices are down everywhere, and uh, including the price of the, the FIL tokens. Um, and so we needed to find a storage provider that was actually willing to take our deals because we had a lot of data. And um, finally, these guys, Descent, stepped up and said, okay, we'll play. Um, is there anybody from Descent here, by the way? No? Okay. Um, they stepped up. And um, they stepped up, you know, because they thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> they didn't realize it was going to be really hard. <laughs> um, and uh, But we're very thankful to them uh, as being the, the first one to step up and try to help make this happen. The fact of the matter is there was a lot of glass to be chewed um, in order to get these really big files on the file coin. Um, I mentioned that 225 terabytes and counting. Um, of that, about 185 terabytes would be the actual ledger data, the historical data stored in a car file. The rest of that is an index that is separate and sits alongside, so they're separate files. Um, the indexes are, they're organized in a way that we need for RPC queries. So if I, if I need to search for all transactions related to a given address, um, if I need to search for transactions by a specific signature, an entire block, an entire epoch, uh, so all the different indexes, um, but the indexes are not trivial. You know, we're still talking about 40 terabytes of data just for the indexes uh, to get at the rest of it. Um, each epoch then, 550 gigabytes of data that we're producing, an epoch is roughly two days. Um, and so we were also then having to consider this is a problem where we have a lot of data that grows in perpetuity, right? Because you, you intend a blockchain to live forever. Um, database software isn't going to do this, <laughs> so we need to, you know, we need to come up with better solutions. And so um, everything that they did is file-based, and again, makes it perfect to put it on Filecoin. Um, oh, no, it's dark, dark and stormy. Um, trying to get the first files uploaded, choked. Um, some of the issues that Descent had to solve was the indexing was basically single threaded, uh, I'm not sure how many threads, but it just didn't have the capacity to be able to process the files. I'm kind of representing that here with just a little simple two track road going down a country road. And uh, so what they did is they started working on multi-threading and then also live streaming uh, for the indexing so that we could basically get these things to load faster. Um, and so they helped us go from two lanes to something that looks more like this, you know, multi-threaded, you know, high throughput, things like that. So, um, you know, kudos to them, the protocol labs team helping out a lot as well, um, just trying to help us actually get this data loaded. Um, let's see, the extremely simplified version. <laughs> um, the, uh, this is our happy user of the Solana blockchain talking to an RPC node. Um, what we'll do is those, those indexes I talked about, like the 40 terabytes, those will actually be held locally. Um, uh, so it'll be local storage uh, on the RPC server, um, but on files, on NVMEs, not holding those in a database. Um, the indexes we can actually search off of NVMEs super fast. And each of the indexes can actually be sharded as we grow this thing in perpetuity, right? So we just keep adding storage as we need to 
um, they can live in different places if they need to, um, and that they can grow forever. Uh, just the same way then that the car files can live on Filecoin and then grow forever. Um, they can be put at different storage providers, different places. The indexes will know. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's all good. And then when the user is making a query into the RPC node, that, that data flow is going to go first to the index to get the results, come back, CIDs out to Filecoin, load just the data that we need that 1K for the one transaction and send it back. Um, huge actually improvement <laughs> over Big Table, because uh, what they did when they, um, and this is technical debt in a big way. Um, right now, if we want a single transaction out of Google Big Table, what we do is we actually have to egress the entire block of uh, for that that transaction sits in and then parse it and then return the 1K to the user. So Instead of uh, paying uh, egress fees for 1K, we're paying egress fees for megabytes just to get the 1K. It's like, you know, technical debt for sure. Um, but again, so much easier for us to do this now because we're just going in and, you know, plucking out that one piece. So, um, It's short. It's, it's going to be a short talk. Um, in conclusion, well, we're not really done yet. So... Um, the uh, we're in a good place. So the third act of the play is that we did get everything resolved and that we've got the data loaded. Uh, there's still some final things that we're doing with the indexing, so it's not quite perfect yet, uh, but we're really close. Um, and so there will be a sequel <laughs> at some point. We'll be coming out and saying, okay, uh, now we've got uh, all the CID stuff working the way it's supposed to and that we're ready to have this thing scale out forever. Um, we also need more storage providers. So we only have one. Um, and this, uh, okay, great. Uh, so this is my call to action is to say, hey, now that we've kind of, you know, you know, chewed through the glass and we've done the hard work, hopefully it's easier the second time around and that we can get more storage providers to come in and join us. So, um, so that's the call to action here. And then that's how we're going to write the sequel is uh, getting more storage providers on board uh, and then getting the system working just really smoothly so that we can get it into production. So keep an eye on old-faithful.net. Old uh, that's where we're documenting everything. Um, we'll have another round of the, the documentation probably one or two weeks and then some more big announcements around that time. So um, that's it. I'm happy to keep talking. Happy to answer questions. What about? Yeah, yeah. I uh, said 40 terabytes there, but 185. But about. Yeah. The ratio of frequency to see as grows and the. Yeah, the ratio will be out the, about the same. Uh, the 550 gigabytes is just the data that's going to go in the car file. And then so we'll have, I don't know if that's like 20% roughly uh, for the index files. And yeah, question on the back. They are. Uh, um, uh, yeah, and I didn't repeat your question. Sorry, I'll repeat your question. Are we still keeping the data on Google? Um, the strategy that we're using is going to be all of the above. So um, the for the foreseeable future, I imagine that somebody will have a big table instance that they're maintaining. Um, I don't think we will. I think we'll jettison it and we'll just use uh, this. Um, the car files are also fully compatible with S3 storage. And uh, these indexes can just point to a byte range inside of the file on something that's S3 compatible. Um, so I do envision people using Filecoin for maybe the data availability piece, not necessarily the data performance piece, right? So that you know where you can go get the data. Um, with the indexes the way we built it, the performance on Filecoin is actually okay. You know, so if it's a really casual user um, that wants to go and grab the data, no problem. You don't you don't have to copy all that stuff over, right? Um, but if you if you know what we'll do is we'll probably then say, okay, we've got the data out there for people to use. You don't have to go through a gatekeeper anymore to get it. Um, but then we're going to pull it in on very close S3 compatible storage, and run it that way. Does that answer the question? Great.
um, come down to the foot of the house and kid out the fucking sort of event somewhere. Yeah. You can call on why you're so, because I don't know the scenarios. Um, well, I think that it's solving a real problem. Um, and again, it's the gatekeeper problem, and uh, which just isn't cool on a blockchain, right? And I, we're one of the gatekeepers, and I don't think it's cool. Um, and so that's why it was a big deal. Yeah. Um, it really was a multi team project. Um, uh, Richard Patel with Jump Crypto uh, contributed, of course, our team, uh, the Filecoin team, the Solana team. So it wasn't, you know, like any one person owned it. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, only funny, I do know about deal renewal. I don't have an answer for that. He asked about deal renewals. Um, I don't have an answer for that yet. So, uh, right now we're just focused on getting it loaded. Yeah. Oh, it's, so she's asking about, again about the gatekeeper problem. Um, so uh, right now, um, and it, I'm just estimating there's five of us that have copies uh, in Big Table. They're all independently maintained, uh, which is good. So we're not, it's not like we're all relying on the exact same Big Table instance because there's you know a single point of failure problem there. Um, but if you want to get access to that data for any reason whatsoever, you have to go through us. And um, and it's coming out of big table. Egress fees are expensive, so it's it's not cheap. Um, you have to go through us. I'm a nice guy, but you know it's still going to cost a fair amount of money. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.